Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at using Cocoa bindings with outline views and tree controllers to make a hierarchical view of transactions and their details. So we can add a couple different transactions here and we have their details listed below. And if we wanted to, we can go in and remove individual transactions from our overall list. I hope you enjoy the video and learn something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create a node class that we can use as our structure for our tree. And in our node class, just like in our array controller, we want this object to be conforming to NS object. And each of our properties should also conform to Objective C dynamic. Each of our nodes should have an ID, which is going to be in the left column, and then a value, which is going to be in the right column. And then each of our nodes also will have a certain number of children. So the root node will have three children, which are the transaction details. And then each transaction detail is a node that will have no children. So objective C dynamic let ID, that'll be our string. And we need an initializer, so let's do that. In order for our tree controller to work properly, it needs three different key paths inside of each node. It needs children, children count, and is leaf. So children we already have covered here. Let's make one now for is leaf. Type bool. And here, a leaf node is essentially referring to a node that does not have any children. So the way to tell if that's true is to just return children dot is empty. And then we can grab our child count. Oops, child count. And that will be of type int. And here we can just return our children dot count. So now our tree controller can point to our children, our is leaf and child count properties in our node object. Now that we have a node object, let's go to our view controller and make a reference to it. So again, we want to make a objective C dynamic and we'll do var nodes equals array of type node and we'll just make it empty for now. And now let's go to storyboard to start building out our view and doing our bindings. And then let's grab an outline view. And then we also want a couple buttons and a text field. Set our outline view properties. We don't want to allow them to reorder and we want to alternate rows and then you want to make sure that our content mode is set to view based we also need to grab a tree controller so let's type that in so for our tree controller you'll notice that we have our children count and leaf key paths and these are the same ones that we specified in our node class earlier so our children refers to children count is child count and leaf is is leaf now you want to make sure that we are set to prepare as content as well. And then let's go to our identity inspector and we'll change our label to be tree controller. And now let's go to our bindings inspector. And here we want to go to our content array. Let's change our shared user defaults to be our view controller. And we are going to bind it to our view controller. And then we want to change our model key path to be self.nodes. And that refers to the nodes variable that we created in our view controller a minute ago. Now we need to tell each of the columns and cells inside of our outline view what exactly they're going to populate with. So let's open up our date and our IDs and we'll open up these all the way. Now for our date, we'll click on the date here and let's go to value and we want to bind this to our tree controller and leave it as arranged objects. You can ignore the red X here next to model key path. We don't need to worry about that for now. And let's do the same thing for our ID. We'll bind our ID column to our tree controller arranged objects. 
And now we want to look at the table view cell, not the table cell view. If you click on this anyway, there's not much available in terms of bindings. So just click the table view cell. And we do want to bind this to our table cell view. And the object value, if you remember, is going to be our ID. And on our table view cell for our ID, this is going to be our value. And actually, since this column name is a little bit confusing, let's change this to be value. Now we need to go to our outline view here on the left, and we want to go to our selection index paths. And basically what we're doing here is we're going to bind to our tree controller and change our controller key, change it away from arrange objects to selection index paths. And you see Xcode has already filled this up. And essentially what this is going to do is allow our tree controller to understand when the user clicks inside of our outline view, what exactly is being selected. If you don't do this step, then your tree controller has no idea how to figure out what the user is currently selecting. And we need that for when we want to remove our transactions later on. Now that our bindings are complete, we just need to drag our text field, our tree controller, and our two buttons into our view controller to bind them and create outlets inside of our view controller. Since we're working with dates, let's go ahead and create a date formatter just to make it look a little prettier. So date formatter equal date formatter. And then inside of our view did load, we're going to set our date formatter date style and time style. Now anytime the user clicks the buy cheese coin button, we want to grab a timestamp, a unique ID that will represent that specific transaction a price, which we're going to just set to be a random double at this point. And then we want to take the amount from the text field that they put in. So let's create a date and set that equal to our date formatter dot string from date. And this will grab the current timestamp. And we'll also create a UUID for our unique transaction. And that will just be UUID dot UUID string. And then we'll make a price. And we'll do a string and we'll format this first. So it'll be formatted to percent two F since we only care about two decimal places. And then we want a random double between, let's just say 0 0.1 and 5.0. So that will be a random price every time we press the button. And then for our amount, we'll just take our amount field dot string value. At this point, we should put in an early return. So we'll say if our amount field dot string value dot is empty. So if there's nothing in there, then we just want to return. So this way the user can't add a bunch of blank transactions. At this point, we're ready to create a new node and add it to our outline view. So to do this, we'll create a new node object. Now, our root level node does want to have children, and those children are going to be the transaction details. So the ID, this is going to be our date, and the value of this is going to be a buy. And then our children, this is going to be the transaction details. So let's create an array, and this array, again, is going to be of type node. So let's indent a little bit to make it clear what we're doing. So our first transaction detail is going to be a node that has our amount purchased and the value, this is just going to be our amount. The next child node is going to be our current price, which again will be put a dollar sign here and this will be price. And then our final node will be our transaction ID. And this is going to be our UUID. So looking at this indentation structure, we have one root level node, which contains the date that we bought our cheese coin on. Now inside of our root level node, we have three node children. 
each one of these children is a leaf because there are no children. We specified using the initializer that has a default empty children property. Our first child is basically our amount purchased. Second child is our current price. And the third child is our transaction ID. And now we need to add our node to our tree controller so that it can basically show it inside of our outline view. Tree controller dot add object. We don't want to add child. We just want to add object and we'll add our node. And then just to enhance the user experience a little bit, we will set our amount field to be blank afterwards so that they don't have to delete it every time. At this point, we should be ready. So let's run our code and see where we're at. So you can see our constraints are not quite right, but that wasn't the point of this video. So let's add one amount. We see we got a transaction. It cleared out our amount field. It set it to our current time. It's buy. If we click the down arrow, we have, we bought one cheese coin for $2 and 80 cents. And this is our transaction ID. Now again, let's add a two and a three and a four. And you'll see they're all there. One thing to note here is because we have our selection paths key bound in our tree controller and our outline view, if we actually click one of these children, let's say transaction ID and add a new value. So let's add six. It's going to insert it under this top level child. And we can do the same thing again. Let's add seven and it's going to insert that under this root level node. So this may be something that you want to disable or not deal with. You'd have to decide what the needs of your application are. I didn't deal with it now because that's not the scope of this tutorial, but just to show you, you can easily insert nodes either in the root or if again, if the user has nothing selected, so let's close all these and then deselect. If we add 20, it's going to be the last one. The only thing left to do is to add our functionality for our remove transaction button. So let's stop this and go down here. The main reason we set the selection index paths key path inside of our outline view and bound it to our tree controller is that we could use it for removing. So let's create a selection constant and set this equal to our tree controller dot selection index paths. And essentially this is going to be set to whatever the user is clicked on or has highlighted at that point when they press this remove transaction button. Just to show you, let's print out our selection and we'll see how this works. Let's run our code. Now let's add a transaction. And if we click the top level node here and hit remove transaction, you'll see that it's printing out an array of an array with zero in it. Now, if we select our transaction ID and click remove on that, we're getting zero comma two. So the tree controller knows that the object that we're selecting is in the zeroth object, which is this top level object, and it's at index two. So this is index zero, index one, index two. If we clicked this one and hit remove transaction, we would get zero comma one. And then if we add another node here, oops, let's ignore that we have that one there, but let's add another node in the root level. If we press this, we would expect to see one because this is an index one in terms of our overall tree controller. There's one. If we click transaction ID, we'd expect to see one comma two. And actually let's go back and see what happens when we click on this one, because this was a nested node zero comma three. And that makes sense because it's in index three. And if we click on the transaction ID under three, zero comma three comma two. Again, that makes sense. We're in the zeroth element, then we're in the third element, and now we're in the second element. That's the one that we're selecting. So let's go back to our code and actually remove the item that we're selecting. To do this, all we have to do is do tree controller dot remove objects. And we want to do remove objects at arranged objects index paths. And this is an index path array, which is our selection. So if we option click on our selection index paths, you can see that it is an array of index paths. 
So let's plug in our selection here and then get rid of our print statement and run again. Now let's add one, two, and three, and we'll expand them all and see what happens. So if we remove the top level object, all of this should disappear. And it does. If we remove our transaction ID, it should just remove this individual one. And it does. We can remove each individual or we can remove the top level node and go back in and add a few more, three, four, and five. And they're all here. Now, again, in this particular application, we wouldn't want people to be able to delete individual transaction elements like this, but that's something that you would have to address in your application, what you want users to be able to delete. And one final note on removing items from an outline view is that if you want to do it with an animation, you'll need to use the outline view and basically bind that to your view controller and then also set the delegate and the data source. That's beyond the scope of this video since we're just looking at Cocoa bindings, but you can do it so that, for example, when you delete or remove one of those transactions, it'll swipe left or swipe right or fade. But again, that's not the focus of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment and some feedback, and remember to hit the dinner bell to be notified of the next video. Thanks for watching.